IIW is a really unique event series. It's where digital identity experts and geeks come together to discuss and to solve problems of identity uh, for the whole world. I would say that internet identity is the really important thing that nobody's ever heard of. Figuring out how to do identity at internet scale across millions of organizations for billions of people is gargantuan. We've had 10,000 years to work out identity in the physical world. We've had just a generation or less to work it out online. That's going to take a lot more work. I'm a big fan of the internet. I think it's the most fascinating and, and great invention ever created by mankind. But it's going to fail if we don't solve the secure online identity problem. Because identity does not live in a vacuum. Everything that you do with identity, you're using that identity for something in order to accomplish some other piece of functionality. That's why I say we use it as a proxy for what we really want. That adds complications, it adds vulnerability, it impacts privacy. The world is a big place. Uh, there is no way that everybody in the world will use the same identity management product from the same vendor. It's just not happening. As a result, collaboration is simply required, uh, like any other market where standardization is necessary. And the interesting thing about identity to me is it's not something that any one party can solve, kind of by definition. There's a lot of complexity, and that's why we need this IIW. We need all these people who come here and discuss these pieces. You see the same thing in many industries. If you look at automotive, right, even though there's strong competition about which car to buy, they've all still standardized on what the fuel looks like or what the oil looks like or those kinds of things. That's really what we're doing with identity. Identity is not a product. It's, it's a how you do it. Identity, when I started, was very siloed. Each enterprise, each person would have their own sort of ecosystem that they worked within and there was no way to share information or to log in across those systems. There were a lot of silos. By silo we mean an individual vertical where somebody is doing identity for their company or their application but it in no way talks to or is even similar to identity in the next silo and identity in the next silo. It is, it's not an easy you know, problem to solve. Uh, there is not a silver bullet. A number of us technologists had built um, new internet identity technologies and um, somebody corralled them all and said, you know, you have to figure this out. There is not going to be 25 different identity standards on the internet. Uh, let's put them all in a room and see what happens. In 2004, Steve Gilmore had a podcast where he invited a whole bunch of identity people. And we thought, maybe we ought to have a conference, a workshop. I mean, we were thinking traditional conference, invite speakers, etc., and get all of these people together. Um, and then Doc met Kalia at a Giants game, I think. It was after like a Linux conference, and they'd given away tickets at the ball game, and I happened to be sitting next to Doc and Steve Gilmore, and then I told him about Identity Commons and he his whole demeanor lit up and he was super excited and he borrowed my computer right there and wrote a blog post about meeting me and the work I just shared with him. So it really went from two people meeting in a ballpark to a bunch of people hacking a dying conference to a podcast to a bunch of people getting together over drinks at a conference to a conference of its own that hasn't quit since. Here, we all sit around tables and we talk about things, and we challenge each other's ideas, we work towards consensus, and so I don't think it's an exaggeration to say pretty much everything that's happened in identity in the last several years has started at IAW. As time goes by and you kind of use IAW as a sounding board, is this completely off the wall or is this going somewhere? One of the cool things is watching something be posted as an idea and have a session at IAW and two years later become a protocol that's working. Something like identity is a very, very big concept and uh, dealing with it on the internet needs to be very, very technical. IAW is actually where a lot of the protocols that I work on on a day-to-day -day basis were invented. 
So OpenID Connect was invented in that room right over there. Um, OAuth was invented just down the hall around the corner, OAuth 2 specifically. So this, this is where the ideas come together. This is really where things happen. In my view, it, it actually promotes the, the possibility of having more innovation. How can we make the, the internet better um, as it relates to identity security users, the user-centric aspects that we talk about so much here? Privacy is, you know, really, really important because of the, the power disparity of the uh, players involved. We need to be able to build trusted digital relationships with other people, with other organizations, and with our governments. And they're not trustworthy unless they can be transparent with us. I, I remain frightened of um, ways in which we're sort of monitored and watched and give up our information without even being aware that we do. And I think that many of us in IIW are constantly looking for ways to push that balance back in the other direction. We talk about privacy preserving technologies. Once you lose your privacy, you can't rebuild it. It's almost as though everywhere you go, you're giving your social security number. Uh, to me, that's the equivalent. Um, it's, it's a gold mine for, for fraud. But, you know, this is not a new thing. There were people who were hacking into the Motor Vehicle Bureau just to get people's names, addresses, and social security number when it was all paper. Okay, and there's a, an inherent contradiction between identity or authentication and, and privacy. If you identify somebody, then that person loses privacy. But there's a way, ways of, there are trade-offs, there's ways of compensating for that. To this day, we have only scratched the surface of what needs to get done. I mean, the best implementation now is, you know, Facebook singles sign on uh, that no, lots of people are using uh, over the internet, um, Twitter and so forth. But I think we are only at the beginning of this. And since I've been working in this space, we've gotten a lot more interoperable. We've gotten a lot more user choice. So it's become much more person focused, much more usable, and it's become much easier to transfer information securely. Everyone's very keen to declare this thing's over, the new, new, new thing is here. Phil and I both really share a deep passion for empowering individuals and getting this digital identity infrastructure right for the good of the whole society and our democracy. So it moves from this is a technology space to this is a space that affects humanity in many, many ways. And so it's much more than engineering. It's, it's kind of every discipline out there is critical. And so IIW has, from the start, been interested in the idea of user-centric identity. And so this is a really important time in identity to get these things right. Because I think we'll get systems that are better, more secure, easier to use, um, with fewer privacy violations. I don't think internet identity is ever done because I think the human condition is always changing. And what we expect out of it is always changing. Everybody walks around with a smartphone almost in, in all countries and, and never before will we have digital identity walking around with us. Mobile devices, cloud computing, Internet of Things, all this has radically changed the conversation and it's just getting more and more user-centric as we go That the sort of fabric of connection, community and trust that allows collaborative work to happen to solve these really hard, complex identity problems is what I think the magic of IAW is about. If you just know that there is a secure link, a direct link between you and I that is not owned and controlled by anyone else, and it's not sh the data is not shared with anyone else, then I do believe in a next generation internet, an internet where trust mo new trust models can evolve that are distributed, fully democratic, and really powerful. And I'm very much looking forward to that.